Hi everyone, this is Jobin Blue, and in this video I'm going to be doing the review of the Star Wars Black Series uh, Gerizeb Zeb Relios. So, Zeb is of course the new figure, uh, brand new sculpt, brand new everything, never seen this before. Gerizeb Zeb Relios. It's a really weird way to spell his name, but it's there. Here's the side of the box. Here's the back. This is actually number one. Uh, you actually uh, can see that on all these, of course. Uh, they ditched the old style of packaging, and they're now using this new one where they just put uh, the series that they're most known for on here. And of course, he is number one. He's also number one on the picture back here. Um, we're also missing Ahsoka and Kanan. Uh, but unfortunately those weren't shipped in at the time of this video. So this is number one, uh, Gerizeb Zeb Aurelios. Meet the muscle of the ghost team. Gerizeb Zeb Aurelios was a cunning Lassat honor guard who adopted the cause of rebellion against the Empire. And all the other languages. Of course, here's the bottom. Includes figure and accessory. There's a pretty picture, and another picture on the side, of course, says his name, and the bottom. And here's the UPC, or did they change the name? I honestly don't know. So there are one, two, three, four tape spots on here, so I'll be back when that's done. Alright, and here he is out of the package, of course, uh, exact same as Hera, you got this gray uh, background piece that you can take out and use as a basic display piece and these are going with the Marvel Legends route where uh, they have the over cover on it of course this stupid piece of paper nobody cares about and uh, very big weapon so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pop him out of the thing all right and here he is out of the thing of course nice looking face still uh, animated but I can still imagine this as a character that Steve Blom had voiced. So, a lot of very pretty artwork all over. You can tell that they really paid attention to all the details. I guess I never really, hmm. I guess I never uh, really realized that he's kind of got a matching color scheme with Hera going on. But there's all the, um... All the different paints and stuff that have been put on here. A lot of love and care. Especially even going so far as to paint this back here. So. Of course, like all these stuff on the bottom. The peg holes for the weapon. And then the actual gun itself and all these parts come off. And I think they form all these different variants of what this actually looks like. It's a little bent, but easily fixable. I guess that kind of just goes in and out. I don't know. I'll play with it for a little bit and get back when I'm actually ready to go over, like, articulation and what all it can actually do. So, I'll see you when that is done. Alright, so it's time to do the articulation for Zeb, and one thing that I have noticed uh, since recording is that it looks like uh, Gabumon, kind of, from Digimon. Uh, I made a post on Instagram about that with these two posed up, uh, so go check that out if you want to. But it was just something cool that I noticed. So, I'm going to go ahead and take all this out and talk about what I did. I didn't actually modify this figure a ton. Uh, I used heat treatment, but that was about it. And I have gone back and I rewatched uh, the Foosh's review, so um, take that into consideration. But yeah, okay. So here's the head sculpt. It's, it's pretty nice. Uh, one thing I didn't really notice was how green it is in the show. It doesn't come across like super green here, but I would say that it still looks very well done. Uh, as opposed to the animated style. 
So the head is on a double uh, ball peg. I can't really get the bottom peg to move around a lot. So I don't know if it's a hair situation and uh, the bottom one doesn't want to move around or maybe I just, oh, all right. So that changes things. Um, yeah, it does have a double ball peg and I just apparently could not break that detent in there. So yeah, it is an amazing head sculpt. Uh, amazing things that you can do with this. Like, what? You can't do that with the majority of figures, especially ones that are still on the hinge system. So, as far as that goes, head articulation, fantastic. I can't complain about this one bit. Like, are you kidding? How can you pull that off? Only with a double ball peg system. But, uh, it still looks fantastic. So, that... Uh, breaking in that detent just made the figure that much better. And uh, I didn't do that before because I didn't want to break it. So uh, it's it's just so fun to play with this figure. Uh, when I originally saw Zeb, I was like, I don't, want, I don't want Zeb. It's like, I don't care about Zeb. Like, yeah, he hasn't been made and is an, he's a member of the crew, but uh, I don't really care about Zeb. And then I got this figure. And this figure is just, it's so good. You you need to get this figure. Um, so, of course, it has an amazing head. You can do pretty much anything you want to with this head. Nothing I would complain about. This is better than Figuarts, which is something that Hasbro has been able to do, but it's pretty rare. Um, of course, there with the shoulder. It looks great. This paint is fantastic. And a lot of cool little attention to detail, like scars and stuff. Um... Foosh complained about his arm being a little loose, and mine is the same way. I don't know if maybe this is a QA thing, or like just trying to get this big of a hinge in here cause that. But it's still not like, like yeah, it sucks that you can't do that. And if I really cared, I would go back and add like a dab of super glue or something. But I also don't care that much about it to the point where I'm going to risk damaging this figure. So yeah, that's a problem. There is no butterfly joint, but um, I would say that it's really not needed with as well a poses that you can still pull off with this figure. Like, yes, it's a it's a, it's a quality of life thing, but uh, it's still very good, and I'm not really going to take off for this having it. There's so much attention to detail and just, like, the things that they put on to the wrist. I really like how... I, I still don't understand how they added this much paint and stuff all throughout this figure. It is so well done. Yeah, it's just, it's fantastic. Uh, you got a communicator there, and, uh, yeah. I mean, it would be kind of nice to have a butterfly joint so you can bring it closer to his face, but, like, still, it's, it's still a great, great figure, and well worth the $30. So, he has a double ball joint at the, uh, at the hip there, at the waist, it's not, it's not horrible, it's not the best, uh, again, uh, it really sucks that these figures don't have offset, uh, elbow joints, as you see on the Spider-Man figures, uh, which would allow for a lot more forward crunch, uh, while still giving the appropriate amount of back crunch, so, um, I mean, it's alright, it doesn't have, uh, drop down knees or anything, it's just, Standard, comes up, kicks out, goes to the side. Yeah. Um, it does have a rotation here at the thigh. Goes full 360. I don't know why you would go that far, but you can. It's definitely an option. Uh, there is... Okay, so my knee, I don't remember which one, was super tight when I got it. So I didn't know if it only had the one pin. Or the two, uh, but it does have two bins, so you just, it's a little tough, and I'm pretty sure Foosh had problems with this one as well, but once you get it in there, it's a uh, very fantastic, and uh, can kick his back, so yeah, um, he doesn't really have any problems with this, of course, um, it's, it's a really weird type of situation, I guess because he is a uh, probably did evolve from a quadruped, like this one over here, like you see how he does this. Well, this figure has that whole, uh, kind of thing. 
Uh, so this one is the same way. So you can bend this way farther than uh, humans can actually go. So that's fantastic. And you can rotate that around 360 degrees as well. Uh, this is a forward-facing pin for rocker. <laughs> and uh, that one goes all the way up. I mean, it goes pretty far up. You can do some very weird things with this figure, but you're not really supposed to be able to do that. So I don't know what they were... Maybe that was how they had to do it in order to get this through, but it would have been kind of nice if they had just uh, f filled out this whole thing so uh, you couldn't break the laws of what you can actually do with the figure like on this figure you can't uh stretch past this specific point but on like the old black series figures you could definitely do some wonky stuff with these figures so it would have been cool if they had added that in there but it's not really that big of a deal so yeah you can still do tons of things um one thing that i know that he does in the show is he gets down into like a crouching pose it must have been this one, which is the pain in to freaking move. Yeah, it's definitely this one. So I probably could heat treat that to make it easier, but maybe someday. So anyways, he gets down into a crouch pose, like super crouch. I'll show it right now. Kind of like this. I mean, it's not horrible. You're not really going to complain about any of the articulation with this guy. It's still fantastic. Any problems that he has is offset by something else that he can do. Uh, so this is still a fantastic figure. It would be nice to implement uh, a bendable... <laughs> see, just weird stuff you can pull off with this guy. But it would be nice to see them implement drop down. But, of course, that would probably also raise the price, which I would be okay with if it raise the standard no higher than like $25. So it can still do very nice kicks. So bend and have all the fantastic things that you want. So I have really no problems with the articulation on this guy. However, the same cannot be said for this um, Royal Guard bow staff thing from uh, Zeb's Homeworld. Okay, so it does, it comes out, it collapses in, so you can put it onto his back. Okay, maybe it only goes on the one way. I don't know, that's weird. Um, but it does go on his back. I think we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but this is how it's actually supposed to be collapsed in with both of those on the same side. Then it lines in perfectly. And I don't know what's entirely going on here, but... Yeah, that is something you can do. It can go into his back. It extends out. There's a few different modes. I'll put this back on here for now. It's called a Lassat Honor Guard uh, bow rifle. And here's what it looks like when it's extended in the actual uh, weapon mode. And these things do come out. I was kind of afraid at first, but uh, definitely not really a problem with uh, taking them out, putting them back in, things like that. So those pieces come out. This is pretty much the gun mode, uh, where this is down. And originally his hands um, were a little too tight to get this in. I'm still having problems with this thumb here. I don't know, maybe I could like cut into there or something, uh, make a very small groove. This is about how it goes in. Sometimes uh, you can't really get the uh, other thumb, I mean the uh, trigger finger in there as well. But he does have a trigger finger and if you heat it up and you take it out and uh, everything should go in. Yeah, so there. There you can line up for a trigger finger mode. But this thumb is still kind of wonky as well. But you can get that lined up and uh, into a gun mode. As well and um, can hold it very nicely uh, with this hand I had to heat treat it and once you do that the other side pops out <laughs> no that's that's one of the things that you have to deal with uh, you have to fight this thing sometimes with the hands I really wish they had uh, I don't know just given him a little bit better of an actual 
uh, finger sculpted into that thing mode, but maybe they didn't want to do it as to screw up the other thing. So it is possible to get him in there and all that other thing, but it's a mess. You get one side put in and then the other side pops out and yeah, but uh, it's fun. So this collapses. I think there are three modes or something like that. I don't, I don't know for sure. Uh, this blaster thing only uh, fits onto the bottom with with the bow staff mode. It doesn't come onto here. It would have been cool if uh, I don't know. But you can't get this on here in normal means. You can maybe uh, put some blue jack into here and then uh, pop it onto the actual blaster and have it be like a blaster bolt type of situation. But yeah, that's uh, as far as I know, that's all he can really do for his um, uh, bow staff royal guard thing. But uh, there is a glittery type of material in there, almost like a metallic. And um, yeah, you can see there's some silver accents in there as well, uh, just to give it a more realistic look. So yeah, that's Zeb. I totally forgot to talk about this thing. Okay, so this up here is a pain in I don't know what the problem is whatsoever. I have swapped between these two stick things, and I still can't figure out what's going on in inside of here. Uh, I watched Foosh's review because I was like, why is mine so messed up? And I couldn't figure out what the problem is. Maybe it is just a matter of... Uh, it got stuck too far in the mold process or something. I've tried to drill out the female pegs in here as well to give him the extra articulation, but it seems like every time I try to fit uh, the male pegs into here, it always goes back to this messed up warp look, and I can't get it any better than that. So that is the only gripe that I really have with this figure. So as far as giving this thing an actual rating, I would say it is fantastic. It is. It went from being a figure I did not care about whatsoever to saying that this is a very fantastic figure. If it had ball joints and drop down uh, hips, it'd be even better. But as far as I know, if we never get a Zeb ever again, um, there's nothing to complain about. It's not like I even can complain about his shoes because he doesn't really have shoes at all. So, I mean, yeah, you know what I mean. So, it's a great figure. Uh, as far as Black Series goes, it is absolutely fantastic. As far as regular figures go, there's not much more that you could have done to make this figure any better. And so, it is fantastic. Get it. Add it to your collection. It's well worth uh, whatever you paid for it. So, yeah. Uh, time to go to size comparison. So, uh, yeah, he's about uh, 7 inches tall. Uh, if you're counting, like, full on Zeb, of course. Uh, here he is next to Hera, taller than Hera, good size, chopper, appropriately small. Here's Ezra, and, uh, yep, looks good. The problem with these figures is that I know the human body is a 70-30 split in everything, but it just makes that so much hard to pose. Actual figures, because everyone... It's always top heavy because nobody wants to put extra weight in the feet. Uh, Sabine. Uh, and uh, there's actually one more I want to show. It's kind of a surprise. Uh, that is, of course, uh, Spike Spiegel, the bounty hunter from Cowboy Bebop, who, as I'm sure you could have guessed, are both voiced by the same voice actor, Steve Bloom, Blum, whatever you want to call him. Uh, yeah. It's pretty cool to see. It's kind of like, uh, what are you going to do? Actually, like, hurt me with that freaking little pistol he's got there? <laughs> no. And here he is next to some stormtroopers. Uh, kind of looks like he uh, threw the other one back there. And uh, the commander's getting ready to try and shoot him. But Zeb has been in some very close situations like this and still managed to come out of it. Actually, like, the first thing that you see if you watch the series canonically is that he, like, walks out of like this huge explosion in the middle of like a city so uh he could probably take a couple blasters in the face i would i would at least hope if if it was like maybe at this kind of range the stormtrooper came and hit him like i don't know maybe he's wasting too much time aiming down the sights and can't actually 
see the target that's like two feet in front of him. Anyway, that's Zeb. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I am, of course, doing reviews for all of the Rebels characters for sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, be sure to check those out. This has been Joe Blue. Thank you all so much for watching, and goodbye.